What up, I'm Kevin, and welcome to Killer Frequency, where I play as a radio host. Yeah, yo, boy, is a radio host. <laughs> but I gotta, like, um, stop people from dying, so they're gonna be calling in, and I have to help them not die. Okay. Did I just get out of the damn trash can? I mean, like, <laughs> why would it start right here? Or did I hop the fence? Maybe I hop the fence. Picking up objects, okay. Drop objects, throw, got it. I'm gonna keep this with me. You know, I might need this on the late shift. I don't know what I just did, but something with some power. Who is that? All right, let me get in here. Inspecting objects. Got it. Here we go. It's like I'm about to walk into my damn death. Oh! Hi! Okay. It's like the perfect job for somebody like me. Huh? You're what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or, I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. But, I mean, does Gallows Creek have a straight cat problem or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... So we was actually like a worker that was walking in to clock in, it seems like, and got killed in the back by that killer. Ah, do I need a tutorial on how to use the DJ desk? Let's do some checks. Let's skip the checks this time. Don't respond when prompted for 30 seconds, dead air. I got an achievement for not doing anything. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubularants. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. All right, uh, okay. Wait, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, there we go. And then- uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the turntable. That's what I'm doing, girl. She got a nice little voice, huh? You probably fine as hell behind there. Okay, there we go. Got it. Great, now turn it off. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. All right, up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Line one. Um, oh, oh, okay, uh, let's see. Press for Peggy, we got- Line one is the leftmost button. The left, mo oh, right here. All right, Peggy, ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don, you get it? Yeah, it's a riot. Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented <laughs> it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone I'm, line. I got it, girl. I got you, Peg. <sighs> Press for Peggy. 
This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Sound blaster. Wait, wait, hold on. That's an easy one. Where, where's the sound blaster? Sound blaster. Front of the desk to the right. Okay. Just any one of these? There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. Okay. Did I get it? Sliders should be right in front of you. Like, directly in front. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Ah, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Uh-huh. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, you're live in three, two... One eighty nine point six. Come on, baby! Yeah! Ooh. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Girl, I don't Forrest, know. You do have the tape right. I don't. You knew we were doing this tonight. Is it one of these? Let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so. Are you serious? I won't do it. I hate what I've become. Are you serious? Really, Peggy? You want you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close and then call in to guess that scream. Well, here goes nothing. The Pertube Yeti scream, the falling from cliff scream, the drowning scream. I'm going with the fallen from cliff. <laughs> what? Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Wait, I might want to hit him with something else. What else we got? Hold on, hold on. The hangups. Storm Riders. Let's see. 198X. There you go. Let me turn that up a little bit. 
Time responses. Some responses have a time limit, but it might be better to not respond in some situations. Should I introduce the song? Oh, there's our time limit. Yes. Time to go on the journey that is. Last processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh God, Forrest, that was amazing. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. Bro, this room is a oh, wait. Forrest, there's a call coming in. Hold on, this room is a vibe. Okay, I got you. I got you. Wait, let's just stop it. Let's stop it. Okay, call coming in. Welcome to 189.16, the stream caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Are you calling to guess that scream? Slow night? Shouldn't you be working? Leslie, I've got to say I'm always happy to have a caller, but uh, shouldn't our 911 operator and police dispatcher be minding the phones? What? Oh, Forrest, you have no idea. Listen, I found a body. I need your help. 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Are you serious? You should call the sheriff. Are you serious? Leslie, I'll level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. What exactly is going on? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Where are the other officers? Is there anyone else at the station? Well, is, is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out tied up and locked in a holding cell i called you right after i found her god wait please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops don't be ridiculous we have three but officer gunderson is on leave in cancun leslie do you have any idea who could have done this not a clue i didn't see anything on my way over leslie you need to call over to henderson or quiet ridge they need to send someone over from their department I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Why me? No, this is a bad idea, you can count on me. Why me? I'm a radio talk show host, Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. I'm not a 911 <laughs> operator. Why me? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Well, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. 
It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's got to be another way in. Try to break down the door, find another way into the cell, find another set of keys. Find another set of keys. There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? <sighs> check the officer's desk. Check Sheriff Matthews. Hey, we got to check Sheriff. I know he did, but shit. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he, you know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. I... Oh, wait. Come on. Come on. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Yeah. Do these work? They do. Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? I can't handle this all night. I think we can handle this. I'm quitting KFAM if this is a prank. For real, man, I'm out if this is a prank. Y'all play it. I, I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like, like this happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. It's the right thing to do. You're leaving. We're on our own. It's the right thing to do. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risks right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? That, that, the, the whistling. Okay. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling? Yeah. Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? With that mask and... Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Uh, lock the doors. Stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Oh, gosh. Forrest, come on. You need to focus. I definitely need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think. Okay, okay. Run for it. Hide in the station. Take a police cruiser. Uh, 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 take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I, yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any. Uh, I'll just reach into your pocket there, deputy. And yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait, how am I supposed to get us to the car? Uh oh. The whistling man is right there. Take Sheriff Matthews' gun. Take Deputy Martinez's gun. I would take Martinez's gun because I'm like literally carrying her. Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. Okay. I... Oh, 
shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Okay, uh, is there a weapon lockup? Can you see any other weapons? There must be a weapon lockup in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. No. No! Oh, shit! None of the keys work. Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Come on, taser something, baton. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, okay. pepper spray, and taser. See, yep. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? I'm taking the baton. Maybe the pepper spray to get in his, well, he has that mask on. Take the taser. I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Taser's ass. <laughs> I'm going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Uh, yes, no. No? No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly, it's gone quiet. No more knocking. Can you still see the whistling man? Maybe the freak left. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <gasps> yep, there you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. Good luck, Leslie. I'm not gonna yell it, I'm just gonna... Well, good luck. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. Hello. We're here. Over. 10-4. That's a big 10-4 there, good buddy. I... I'm guessing you made it to the car then? Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Yeah. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! What was he in the back seat? Leslie, what's happening? What's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! He was in the back seat, huh? Yeah, tase his ass. Yeah, drive. Get out of there. Leslie, what are you waiting for? Get out of there. Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Tase him and go. Are you two okay? Well done. Are you tired in there? Stretching and stuff? Sounds like you handled that pretty well. Forrest, that taser. Come on, y'all. Right Definitely call. the right call. Come on. Oh, my God. I can't believe well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek is a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. That long? We'll do our best. You better floor it. We're good. We got this. We'll do our best to keep everyone safe until then. Thank you. Just do what you did just now, and Gallows Creek is going to be okay. And we got this, y'all. In... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care. Try not to crash. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Deputy Martinez survived the whistling man. Folks, you heard it here. 
We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, Here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. If you dare, the late night lurkers. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this whistling man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just did. Okay, what happened to him? And he's come back tonight? So we're screwed. What happened to him? Okay. What happened to him? Well... Police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. Mm. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight... I don't know. Just a map of Gallows Creek. Wanted to check it out. So this is where the killer was at. Whistling Point. Jumped into the river. Police never recovered his body. We'll do our best. Guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with. Whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people at best. 35 at best? Are you serious? We only have 35 listeners? 35? That's nothing. Come on now. 35. That's nothing. That's 35 people you're talking about, Forrest. They're not nothing. They're people. People who like tuning into our show. I got you. I got you. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. Around five for most shows on the low end. Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet, I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Come on, man, what the heavy breathing? Like, don't nobody want to hear that? About to hang up. Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? You know my name. I've come back from the dead to kill again. No one said. <laughs> Is that weak whistle? <laughs> you don't have to do this. Do you accept requests? 
do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. <laughs> Maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice? The prank call. Us. I, I mean, me. See? We want cheese dusted pretzels. <laughs> I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. Uh, Goddamn kids. Yep. I'm cutting them off. Yeah, cut them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Come on, kids. You little shits. Okay, I'll do it. <sighs> okay, so cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a wise choice. See you soon, Morris Nash. Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. Right. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Ooh, okay. Let's see. What are we going to give them? The flow. There we go. Peggy, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp. The cops aren't coming. The sheriff is dead. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Oh, God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the whistling man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Where are you now? A jazz run. Bad night to go out for a run. Should I be a smartass? I'm sorry, but you really picked a bad night to go out for a run. I know that now, baby. That's why I jazz ran back to my car. But I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. I never locked the door at least. I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Can you go back and find your keys? Sound like you lost him. I think you'll be fine. Is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Well, I'm not going back out there. I... Oh, gosh. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Oh. Look, I don't know a thing about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Oh, shoot. Wait, wait, I don't. Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and, <laughs> and savior. savior. <laughs> Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Should I introduce the song? Yeah. Now it's time to go with The Flow. And this is their hit, Crying for Help. 
Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. So you want me to... Okay. Ah. There's a killer on the loose for us. Oh. Oh, this is where you're at. My bad. Bro, this is so vibey. I love this. Yo, look at the floor and everything. Like the colors. Back in the day. The records. So many locked doors, so few keys. Huh. Creepy hour. It's a magazine, craft and work. Okay, we gotta find something that will help her get her car started. Twins, I borrowed your car. Wait. This has to be important. Twins, I borrowed your car theft magazine. Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read, pray for me. So maybe it's in the restroom, the magazine we're looking for. It's gotta be in here. Yep. This looks useful. We got it. Okay, here we go. How wire are you right? Keyless entry techniques. Step one, use a screwdriver as a key. If that fails, step two, remove the steering column cover. Step three, check the serial number, then stripe and twist the following. All right, this should help us out, right? You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. When you're ready, shut the music off. I think I'm ready. I think, I don't know. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this, baby? Okay, put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. Remove the steering column. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. Come on, girl. You got it. One, two. God. How long are these screws? Okay. Covers off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here all paired up. And oh, God. My heart is pumping. Check the serial number. You're doing great. Tell me exactly what you see. Do your jazz breathing. Don't panic. Tell me exactly what you see. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay. I can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. If there is a four before three, what? Wire, wire, wire. Do not touch the live wire. Okay. Step three. Check the serial number. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is five, seven, Strip and twist the following wires together. There is a six anywhere, and it doesn't start with the five, green and brown. So there's a six, but it starts with a five. Okay, so not the middle one. If there's a zero at the end, and a three doesn't come before six, red and yellow. If there's a four before three, yes, and number seven, four before three, and number seven, red and blue. Okay, four before three, and number seven, red and blue. Strip the blue and red wires and twist them together. Okay, here we go. Blue and red and twist and turn and... Oh, oh, oh it won't turn off! Oh, do this to me, yeah, it's radio. Three pink wires going into the stereo. What do we do? If the radio turns on and won't turn off, cut the left pink wire. Do not cut the other pink wires. Okay, left wire. Cut the left wire. Man, this is a tit. What? What? He's walking toward the car. Oh, what do I do? Okay. 
shit. Uh, red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red Come on. and yellow wires. Come on! I think this is our last right. chance. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Oh, perfect. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Oh, shit. Okay, uh, pink and purple. Now strip the purple wire. Do not touch the live wire. So the live one will be exposed, right? Brush the purple wire against the twisted wires. This one. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Just keep driving. We did it. I'm glad you're safe, but lay off the jazz. Just keep driving. And just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. We did it, Forrest. Sandra sure did. Sharp Here comes survived the whistling man. That we're ja excited it's two to in a row. With you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. The word, smooth. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. I love these tracks. I still can't believe this is happening. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? It's nothing personal. It's a sad place on earth. Peggy, be honest. Peggy, be honest. It's a dump. There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Friendly, usually, if you get to know them. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Some folks have been okay. You don't notice the stink after a while. Some folks have been okay. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible after a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. 1242. Caller on line one. Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Boris. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Okay. Hello, Brian. Hello, Brian Ponty. <laughs> Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Mm -hmm. oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you oh. some coupons for free pizza. Damn. Here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. I bet. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Poor choice it was tonight, I guess. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, that didn't come out great. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. Don't worry about it. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, thank you, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. 
Come on down to Porty's Pizza this weekend! You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself... God damn it, you're just calling in to advertise... Yeah, yeah, that's what you're doing. Peggy, hang up on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, my man. gosh, man. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Oh. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Um, I'm about to learn. Nope. In flight check time. Christ. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. Uh. The cassette player is on the desk in front of you, just above the sound blaster. There should be a cassette in the dock nearby. Fine. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for, for only 24 99 Then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. Okay. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS... How long is his damn ad? ...technique and karate love me. Call today! Do Damn. people really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I'd <laughs> watch them, I guess. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. Wow, what a deal. Only $24.99. And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. But <laughs> unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Leslie left me in charge. I am 911. You haven't heard, have you? I'm guessing you've not been tuned in to our show tonight. Damn it, son. What does that have to do with anything? Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source. Come on, OG. Sir? We're live on air. Just tell me what's happening. Never mind that. Tell me what's happening there. You said there's been a break in? That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in, dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teen. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. I don't think it's a teen. And now he's back. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... 
Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Can you get out of there? Think you can take the whistling man? Think you might be up for fighting the whistling man? Son! I am 55 years old. If this freak killed Sheriff Matthews, <laughs> I don't like my chances. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? Oh. They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. I'm with it. And buy Maurice time? And get an exclusive interview with the killer? And get an exclusive interview with the killer. That could be interesting. Yo! No, I mean we just make a distraction. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. <laughs> Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. Damn. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Fax machine. More to do. There's still more to do. Oh, okay. So the fax machine is in here. Where the hell is it? Where the, where the fax machine? Oh, I'm trying! The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Wait, Thanks, it Peggy. just told me that. not to go out? Oh, okay. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Uh, is it that easy? I mean, damn. This must be it. Okay. So we got a layout. We got to do this right, y'all. Let's help the old timer. Hey, did you get the fax? Yeah, I have. Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? I got it right here. Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. Whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. Okay, he's in the this office space. Of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? So if he's in the office space, I'm thinking call the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. Forrest, this is no time for jokes. Where should I call? Oh, my bad. Um, how far are we trying to get him away? Maybe the kitchen, damn. Probably get some food. Call the kitchen, the extension is zero two. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? I would put you in the archives. On second thought, let's dial another room. You know what? If you're trying to get down, I'm going to call the uh, editor's room. Thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another. Floyd, what we 
Gosh. Wait, hold on, wait. I'm trying to make him go in the editor's room. I can get another number ready, but we probably won't get to change our minds again. Okay. Where do you want me to call? Let's call, call the editor's, the editor's office. office. Yeah. The extension is zero three. And then I'm gonna make him go into the kitchen. I'll cut the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Oh, gee, go to the kitchen. Moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. Good plan, Peggy. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Uh, not really. Ready as I'll ever be. Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Come on, y'all. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. Okay, good. I gotta give you credit for that. Whew. I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quietly. Hmm. Maybe play dead? Can you lock him in a room? What if you played dead? Maybe the killer would walk off and you could get out after him. Nash! He knows I'm not dead. That's the whole reason he's here. To kill Well, me. I had to ask. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Mm. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Yeah. Ooh, a secret archive? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you would love that? What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Now's not the time, Peggy. You a conspiracy fan, Peggy? Yeah. I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. Will you two chat amongst <laughs> pipe down? Okay. I got it all figured out. The secret archive. Uh-huh. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Hmm. Is there a TV in there? Use yourself as bait. Use a radio. Let's use a radio. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he... Is it still in the office? I hope he's a 189.16 The Scream fan. <laughs> We're so not taking this serious. Glad you got a radio fan there. <laughs> Does he listen to 189.16 The Scream? Gallows Creek's best and only late night college show. Jesus, Nash. I'd expect that level of self-advertisement from Brian Ponty, not you. Don't be a Ponty, Forrest. That's low. <laughs> Will you idiots focus now? Okay, let's focus. The portable radio should still be here. It should be in the 
archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Cool. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town. We're saving everybody. Let's make it happen. Don't get excited yet. Let's make it happen. Close. Let's make it happen, Peggy. How can we fail? I mean, it's a plan with steps. Get the radio, plan it in the secret archives, lure the killer, and... Oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Alright. Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. You just... Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. But wait, we're the radio. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Eh, if you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16... Now, even when I know something for a fact, I like to double check. But after your earlier self advertisement, Nash, <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Maybe to the boardroom. That's call pretty far. Room. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office. Yeah. But we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Uh, maybe the arches. Call the archives. The the ar ar archives, not arches. Ar archives. I'm in the oh, archives. Oh, shit. My bad. Keep your head on, man. Or he's going to cut off mine. Uh, I'm sending him to the Call boardroom. The boardroom. The extension is zero. We just go out to do it. Boardroom. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office. But we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling the boardroom now. I mean, the killer hasn't went over there yet, so hopefully the boardroom works for us. Hopefully. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Oh, man. I'll impersonate Mr. Russell. I'll give fake advice. I'll call the killer a jackass. Yeah. I'll just call the whistling man a jackass. Mm hmm That'll get his attention. <laughs> it will. That's the plan, right? <laughs> sure is. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. Okay. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am the... Good question. It's under my desk, but uh, I can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. That's pretty far. Your judgment has kept me alive so far now. Man. Gonna put it in my hands? Hide under your desk, hide in your cabinet, hide inside the secret archive, hide among the cubicles. I wanna get him as far as possible. Cubicles. Hide among the cubicles. All right. It's a stretch. This is it. But you gotta move fast, OG. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? Okay. We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Hey, Whistling Man, Jackass. Hey, Whistling Man, Jackass. 
Forrest, I don't think that was enough time oh, for him shit. to hide. Oh shit! I shouldn't wait, have said wait. anything. Oh shit. Oh, damn, my bad. Fuck. Forrest, he's I got too happy. Dead gone out of print. He's out, out of print. He's out of print. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. Damn, y'all. That would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> oh. We'll be back soon. I got the old timer. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call. After this next track. Bruh. I can't believe that. I got the old timer kill. Man, I ain't trying to put that on. I'm trying to put on this uh stab stab in the twilight. Let's do that one. Man, bro. I better put a record on. Old timer. I ain't introducing the well, song. This is gonna be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quick. Damn, I was on a good street. Ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. What do you want to know? I'll regret this, but okay. Maybe I like being a mystery. Did it occur to you that maybe I like She's trying to get to know me, you know what I'm saying? Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. My wife is cooking downstairs, y'all. I smell some bacon and some eggs, maybe some smothered potato. Y'all bring your boy and play. It's a long night. You know what I'm saying? I just got somebody killed. Hey, look, that's it. Ain't nobody else dying. We was on a good little street. I'm a little upset about that. OG, rest in peace. Everybody in the comment below. Hashtag RIP OG. Moment of silence. Even though the game music is played. Don't be sorry, I'm not. Don't be sorry, I'm not. Oh. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, what happened there? Oh. Huh? What a coincidence. What happened there? Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck. And, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying yeah. to be... <laughs> It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No, not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Oh, hmm. really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Hell no. You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Gee, thanks, Peggy. <sighs> Understood. I'm on it now. Let's go check. We bought that action. On the front door. See you in a bit. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. Wow. That was ominous. Huh. A oh, a tape. tape. Wait, before I pick it up, what else is around here? Jenny. Oh, shit. What the fuck was that? Jenny plus Carrie's friendship quiz. I'm sure we're probably going to need this later, huh? Play on air. Play me on air. All right, let's go play it. 
Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to. Oh, that's us. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. It's our voices. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Be careful, Gallows Creek. Sorry about that. That uh, uh, <clears throat> wasn't uh, the ad tape we meant to play. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. There's no way the killer got from the newspaper to here so quick. I know. So he's right outside somewhere? 104. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Huh. Or try your call again. Ugh, straight to voicemail? My God. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you've never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you all right? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. Final I Breath. I hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. Wow. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest. You know, Roddy Snatcher? Big Roddy fan. We are old friends. I used to be a big deal. I used to be a big deal, Peggy. I knew lots of people. Oh, I love Roddy. I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe he didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to KFAM, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. All right. Damn, you don't do nothing. We're looking for the final breath. Oh, here it is, record. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. Boom. Hey, did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows <laughs> Creek, I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. And I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Here we go. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 
the scream. Come on. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy. <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for <laughs> us tonight? Two things first. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Happy birthday. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh, most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Weird night to celebrate, but, I mean, it's not that happy today. I mean, it's not that happy today. Forrest. Nah, he's not wrong. And that brings me to my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. Uh-huh. Uh, this is a bad idea, Murphy. Oh boy, here we go. Are you gonna kick his ass, Murphy? Kick Come his on, ass, Murphy. please. God damn right. Yeah. I'm kick his ass. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's dojo series. So get ready. Hey, Murphy man. might be the one. You just let loose the junkyard dog. Woo! Oh no. Yeah. <sighs> And there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. Although, having heard that Master Robbie ad earlier, uh, well, don't get your hopes up too much. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hair okay, rock, hey, dang. hey you there. You know, hold on real quick, y'all. Let me get my phone because... I'm hungry. Hopefully I got a plate down there. Hold on. All right. My wife said I'll make you a plate and take it up there whenever I'm done. I appreciate that. I am waiting. Thank you, sweetheart. A few moments later. Bro, we in the game. I got some other potatoes. I told y'all. I knew it. I know what I smell. I got eggs, bacon, little pancakes, syrup right here. I'm going to go ahead and eat. And play. Y'all don't mind me. Y'all know I'm like y'all cousin, brother, unk. I'm a family member. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's listen to this ad. Eight safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbin, firearm, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, sheets, bitten sand, licking, cracker, cramming, and cat shop. And fake tattoo, face paint, and puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dance, and story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory, and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here, Forrest. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. We got a caller. You know what to do. Yep. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh-oh. Who's there? Hello? Hello? Who is this? Hello? Are you okay? Hold on. Hello? Hello. Are, are you still with us? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Hey, listen, Collar. Don't panic. 
We've done this a few times now. Mm -hmm. We can help you. A few times already? So you saved them or? I mean, well. Well, you know, we learned a lot. Oh, God. We're going to help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're going to be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Call a neighbor. Can you hide? Can you run away? Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? Any Come on, Virginia. Idea frat might be Peggy. If I knew where she was, I might know. But wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Okay. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't worry. Try to remember. Try to remember. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do this. Well, folks. Seems like our Virginia hung up while we try to figure out what takeout to order. Yeah, well, I want music for your own midnight snacks. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well, there's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree. Grilling Spree. And you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponty's Pizza. That's it, I think. Let's get calling. That's it. That's it? Gallows Creek only has three places? You know, Forrest, just for once, I think you should be thankful that we're not in Chicago. Um, let's get calling. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is Look at this. the map. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Better get to it. I hate this town. You know, it's things like this that make me hate this town. Complain after you save her, Forrest. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. I thought I was going to be looking on here, but... God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? Staff Being area. Food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... I just have to look around. Ooh. Locked. For now. Private. This is creepy. Do not disturb. Ah, got to be something over here, huh? Go Gallows High, I guess. Okay, let's see. Vertigo Weekly, Top Hits, Craft and Work, From Below It Came. Nice, new music to play. Cool. Huh, rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh, interesting offer. Ponties. Think I got it, girl. Hey, find anything useful? Yes, I'm ready. I'll wing it. I'll look again. What am I looking for again? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I have. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Uh, yes. Let's make the call. 
Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Ponty's. Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Hey, dude. Frat man calling. Frat man calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. <laughs> May I take your order? Garlic bread, slow roast pizza. Garlic bread is faster, right? I need some garlic bread. Oh, I need the bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Thank you. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? K Farm. Oh, consider it done. The folks at K Farm are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. We got the new track here. This is. I'm coming to get you by Vice. One of the best tunes this year. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Equally awful? Equally good? If I had to pick? You mean equally awful. No, equally good. But if I had to order, uh -huh. not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right. So, between grilling spree and chalupa covers. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Hey, 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 this is Fretman Bunker. We got some garlic bread and a note to call this. Number. Okay. <laughs> yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And. Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a Goose bread. This is Forrest. This is an emergency. Sure, this is Goose. Sure. Whatever, it's Goose. Now, listen, I... Goose, dude, get your ass to the party. We got so much beer! Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your He's so drunk. For you. I'm not Goose. I. How can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Yeah, somebody that ain't drunk. The Wait, flow. Man, what? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. There you go. I got you. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you. Just say no more. Walker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Stream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Please. Oh my God, it's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. 
You're welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes. Some told y'all we got this. Toys. Ain't nobody else dying. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. The janitor? Right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. Virginia Sullivan survived the whistling man. Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Oh, what small business do you own? You sure are up late. Good for you, friend. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Porty's Pizza! The best oh of my the gosh. Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponty, no. No free ads. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. It did save Peggy, Virginia. He's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. <sighs> okay. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 stand-in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure are, caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her you got a special lady coming out to see you yeah molly mm. we planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight to take our first journey together into the love labyrinth that's why i'm calling actually i, I thought she'd be here an hour ago and since i've listened all night to how cool you play it i thought you were the perfect guy to ask i mean should I call her up and ask if she's coming or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Go home to your parents. Do you really need to ask? Stay and wait. Eugene, I... Do you really need to ask? I'm just not sure, you know? Go home to your parents. Stay and wait. Ah, what the hell. Stay and wait. Forrest, that's a terrible idea. Eugene, please go home. Your parents must be worried sick. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. You screwed Peggy, that one up, Peggy. I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. We'll get you out of this. Do you know the way out? Just run through the walls. We'll get you out of this. Stay calm, Eugene. We'll get you out of this. Carm, I'm about to die a virgin. <laughs> Listen, Eugene, breathe. Damn. Hide and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. We got you, fam. I, I'll do it for Molly. Don't trip. This is what we do. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. All right. We're just going to play this, baby. 
How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? Isn't maze maze for kids? Maybe we should call Barbara. Why'd she change her mind? Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone have dates in the maze maze? I'm so sorry to hear that, Peggy. Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Receptionist. Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh. Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception. Never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Receptionist desk. Maze, maze. Let's see. Okay, anything down here? From below it came. All right, datables. Oh, look. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, looks like Brad broke her heart. Oh. Wonder what she'd have done with all that maze maze stuff. Barb, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope we can still be friends though, Brad. P.S. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. Wow. Damn, Brad. Here it is. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Any luck? For Eugene? Yes. For Barbara? No. Brad canceled the date. So Barbara left her tickets and a map for the maze maze behind. Ugh, Barbara can do better than... Never mind. Let's save the kid. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. Okay, you're at one. painted gold on my right. Um, he's at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. Gold hay bales is on his right. Okay, so one and two. So he's facing that way. He's facing like me towards, like looking this way. Let's go left. Go left. Okay. A creepy rocking horse on my left. Okay, go backwards. Go backwards. Oh. <laughs> Why didn't I just invite her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Pitch, pitchfork. Okay, so you're at five. Go left. Go left. Okay, mini barn, scarecrow. Nothing to, my sides. Nothing to your sides. We go left. Go left. That'll swing him around. Okay. Here I go. This uh, doesn't look right. Uh, no, no, I I'm going back to where I was. Okay. Jesus. Oh shit! He's cutting through the walls. Where do I go? Go right. Go right. Okay, that's nine. Oh, I didn't see anything else. <laughs> Corn. Oh, 
Torn Silo. Go back left. Go left. Okay. I'm going. That should wrap him around and get him out of there. No. You don't have to do this. Ah! I think I'm going to be sick. Oh my gosh. I was trying to make him go back around nine and hit that top left corner. And then he was out. Stupid kid. Stupid kid. What the hell was he doing out? I don't know. Damn. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. 149. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Collar, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know about wonderful, but uh, thanks. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune, sure. Long ride home. Long That'll ride so home. Sure, we got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I, I threw it out the window earlier today. Why? Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. And I gotta go get it, huh? What do we do then? Sorry about Brad for shame. Peggy for shame. What do we do then? All right. So, uh... What do we do instead, then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest. Wait. Hello again, Mr. Dojo. What's wrong? Hello again. Hey, what uh, what brings you back? Oh, the killer got me, man. I. Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? Ah, uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Goddamn Mason! He came for the gallows waste disposal. Oh. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but... Oh. Oh, God damn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. That was the dude that was about to throw hands. Get the fire department on the line. On it. All right, now just come on, pick up. Hi, yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He, oh, God damn it. 
force that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Wow. I can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. <laughs> and there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Haddonfield, Lane. Haddonfield, Myers. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. I knew we'd be using this map. Okay, here we go. Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Romero Street. So Haddonfield Road, next to Romero. Where's Haddonfield Road? Okay, next to Romero, by the sheriff's office. So he's pretty close to Gallows Waste. Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. Where's Myers Lane? Okay, west end of Myers Lane. She's pretty close too. She's a little closer. Old man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane. Fire department, get more fire engines. I'm going with Catherine. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. Murphy said he wanted to fight the killer. Called him out and got his ass. We're going to try to save him though. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine, are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? Oh, that thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it, I'm going in. Okay, see anything, Murphy? Smell anything? Murphy, Catherine, recycling. Catherine, waste disposal. Catherine, personal storage. See anything, Murphy? Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah, I got a little flashlight. It looks like... Old cans, okay. Bottles and newspaper. What does it say on the newspaper? Henderson headline. What was that? My reception is terrible in here. Please, force. Tell me where to go. Smell anything? Murphy, tell me what you can smell. What do you think, genius? I told you earlier. Fire. I smell fire. This isn't helping? No, it's not. Go to personal storage. Kind of taking a guess. Not kind of, but okay, yeah. I'm here. I I will. What is it? Er, that's not my kind of thing. Uh, it's not my kind of thing. Forrest. What the hell, man? <laughs> oh, I mean. Oh, God, Murphy. Poor Fernando is going to be crushed. Maybe he didn't even die. Terrible way to go. His father died a hero. Just like his dad. Crushed. Yeah, Fernando will be crushed. He probably didn't even just die, like y'all. <laughs> Poor kid. Forrest, that I wasn't trying to set you up for a punchline. No, I know. Ugh, Murphy, I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. Peggy, it's going to be our... Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste time. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up the bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows. All right, Teddy, hurry up. Jackass. Look. All right, thanks, Teddy. 
your prick, Teddy. Thanks. Uh, right. Thanks, Teddy. Now, are you... Teddy, you lowlife. This is not the time to promote your damn campaign. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Emergency, not problem. The whistling man. Your family's waste plant burn. Your family waste plant just burned down. So now we have nowhere to dump our garbage. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. <laughs> this dude. Oh, here we right, go. like. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and. You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... <laughs> and that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. Wow. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us. I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Okay, let's see. Let's put this in. I see the flag. Kind of ad is this? Teddy Gallows Jr. Oh my gosh! Is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs improve infrastructure and make gallows creek a good place to raise a family unlike current mayor linda cartwright teddy gallows jr lives in gallows creek he's our neighbor and he stands with our neighbors like sheriff matthews who after years of keeping the peace mayor cartwright is trying to force into early retirement teddy gallows jr doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. <laughs> and I approve this Oh, message. gosh. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Uh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it! She's just a kid. Where are you? Can you run? Can you fight back? Where are you? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me. What's your name?
sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there. Come on. All right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. The old murder house. Uh, upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Where should Carrie hide? Go to the bathroom, go to the bedroom, go to the closet. I think he'll check the closet. Go to the bedroom. Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Man, this killer is just wreaking havoc on the town. He's here. He's here. Nah, you good. We got you. Forrest, I don't think we can. Run, don't move. Don't, don't move. move. Oh no. Oh no. What? Did he stab her? Forrest! <laughs> oh, they're pranking. <laughs> what? 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 Are you... Are you kidding me? Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? Come Just on, man! Wait, isn't that... Forrest Nash, what the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. Prank night. It's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. You're sick, Jimmy. He's out there, Jimmy. Go home, Jimmy. He's out there. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just whistling night, man. That little idiot. Whistling night? Especially stupid since that one kid died back in. Oh, would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh. Uh. Wait. Oh no. Uh oh. Who, uh, who are you? Oh no, Dad! We told him. At least Carrie's good. Oh, holy shit. Oh, holy shit. As long as he's out there and we're in here, we're safe, right? You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and. Oh, of course! The van! Come on. Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Jimmy. Man, Jimmy got the keys. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay, Carrie. I'm sorry about Jimmy. Focus. I'm sorry about Jimmy. I'm sorry about Jimmy. Thank you. This is Trying to calm her, you know. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. Ugh. We'll see what we can come up with, and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... Uh, and... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We, uh, uh... We're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... 
Shut up, you... Ugh. Boris, I'll call you back. And I don't know anything about your friends. Well, Carrie's still alive, so... <gasps> These damn kids never learn. Are you okay? They're just dumb kids. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trap kids out there. <laughs> all the trap kids? Uh, I feel like I played everything. You know what? Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Downstairs. Desk is downstairs. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. For real. Okay, the gallows for life, Jimmy and Jeannie. Wait, is that that thing that I found here? Friendship quiz. This might work. Hey, you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. Time to turn the music off. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot Day. Most likely, okay, for a climb, it's gonna be Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all Pick the lock. Me. Most likely to escape prison, pick a lock. It's Jennifer. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. That is part four. This plan is impressive. This plan is long. This plan is ambitious. This plan is ambitious. This plan is, uh... <laughs> Oh, it's ambitious. Thank you. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. Okay, athlete. We need a fast runner. Hot this David. This one we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Uh, Hot David. Hot David. <laughs> yeah, you, uh... You spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. Uh huh. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the band keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. Uh huh. So, let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Most believable got, bait. We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. I'm thinking Cynthia. Cynthia. Right, Cynthia. They'll do. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. We got that right. Finally, I think. Part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be? Who have we got? Chad, Scott, huh. Tammy. Getaway driver. Uh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Our getaway driver, most likely to end up in prison because maybe he is a getaway driver. It's probably Seth, but he's not an option here. So Scott, most likely to escape 
second. Tammy is on the poker face. She's not really a good one. Chad is not even on the most likely to escape. So we got to go with Scott. Scott. I know we all love watching Americans. Uh... Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. Right? I hope so. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. I think it was a good plan. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. Don't die. All right, hit it. All righty then. Hit it. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter. To the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. Okay. Okay, he took the bait. Come on. His face is the keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him for his God. Come on, focus. Focus. It's okay. Focus. Breathe. Right. Right. The van keys. Got him. Okay. Ah, Jennifer got the gate unlocked. Perfect. And hot David should be back any second. Oh, perfect. It's working. I can't believe it's actually working. Yes. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step. Trap the killer. All right, wait, get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. Oh, there he is. He's buying it. Yes. Come on. Come on, come on. Quick, everyone to the van. Driver, take the keys. We trying to save them all, y'all. Fingers crossed. That damn gate swung shut. Come on. Was that? Go! Now! Oh my god. Come on, Carrie. Please, no. No. Carrie? Carrie? <sighs> he just... He just stared at me. Carrie? Carrie? Yes. He just stared at me. And walked into the and woods? Walked into the woods. Why? Ah. Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you had 
hadn't I? It was your plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. It was all you. Don't forget Jeannie. You get home. You get home now, Carrie, before he changes his mind. Right. I, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Yes. We saved them all. Come on, give me my achievement. That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to the parents whose kids won't make it home tonight. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Come on, baby. We saved them all. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Ah, you talk a lot. Thanks, friend. No self-promotion. You talk a lot. You sure talk a lot. It's just passion, man. I, I got a lot of thoughts going on, you know? Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. Mm. I don't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. Sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now, whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Aw, oh, oh. oh, hello, Max. Oh. Welcome, Max. He's a good boy. We've gone to the dogs. There it is, folks. We've officially <laughs> gone to the dogs. I love Come being on, smart. Morris. Max is the best guest we've had. I'm a smart he ass. He is. He's not even here, Peggy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done. And then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. He's a special boy. Neighbors must love it. <laughs> it sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating's got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Sure. Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. Uh-huh. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. <laughs> Maxie. Got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. What does he want? I guess I'll just... 
I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is <laughs> inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Carrie. Made it home safe. Carrie! Yeah. Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it. And, uh, I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Hmm. Why, why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did, why let me go? He saw you as a victim. He wanted the pranksters. He got bored. Maybe he got bored. He just didn't feel like it. He just didn't feel like it? What, he felt like killing my friends? And then just got bored when he got to me? Yeah. Forrest, not cool. I have to go. I can't do this. <sighs> Let's just get some music on the air. Uh, yeah, here's some music to clear the air. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. I'm good. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that for us. We have a caller. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? And What's how do you mind? know that? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were gonna oh, because she called in. Okay. You your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune for a long ride home. You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Maybe another song, You Must Love It, but we don't have it. You must love you it. You must really love that song. If you're calling up to ask for it when you know we don't have it. Well, I, I do love it, and I don't want to argue, but you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? Miles from the station. It won't take a second to grab it. Uh, nope. He's fast. Try again tomorrow. Call us back tomorrow when this is all over, Don. Uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No. No, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest? Peggy, I'm... I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. Oh. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Are you serious? Okay. Play my song, Forrest. And you'll find out. If I play the song. <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... All right, why don't you go? I don't care. Why don't you go? Then why don't you go and get it? It's one of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I can't leave the booth while we're on air. Mm. Peggy. Just, you can do it, okay? <sighs> Fine. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait. Here we go. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The Screw. With me, Peggy. 
All right. Fire door. Wait. So the murder was up there. And this is our radio station. The uh, intro in the beginning of the game. Wow. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Out here. In the open. Alone. Heck is this record? Is it right here? Oh, he's right there. I saw him. It was very fast. Bruh. Here it is. Long ride home. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Okay, let me hurry up. Of course. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Damn. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door elevator or something the basement should i and there we go that's broken too only the best for cake fam Let's see if i can fix this looks like a power issue i should check the fuse box okay fuse box where the heck is the fuse box man yep i remember We've got a few fuses to replace. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. So let's throw that down. We'll take this one out, throw it. Put this one in. Two more fuses. It was like way back here, huh? Yep. Both of them. Can I carry? Be nice if I could carry both. I got two damn hands, right? Sheesh. All right. Nah, that's not right. Do the fuses add up properly? Oh. Okay. That's what we gotta do. So this will go here. We'll put five. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Five, ten, fifteen. Okay. I need ten. This is thirty. Or oh, seventy. Okay, so we'll put 15 here. So we got 30, 50, yeah, 65, 7. Bingo. Gain access to the station after being locked out. God, that is loud. Oh, man. I could probably survive that fall. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clyde? What the heck? The heck he got going on in here? It's the damn janitor? Wow. Wow. Bruh! What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Are you serious? Game day? Oh. Did he close it? He didn't close it, did he? Oh, gosh. Okay. It's the janitor. Oh, oh. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. That's locked. What's in here? Nothing. God, please let this be the last locked door. <sighs> you know, maybe there's something in here. I don't know. This might help us. Oh, keys. Ah, there's the beautiful key. I should be able to get back to the studio now. God, I'm nervous. Just don't know if he's gonna pop out of... Pop out somewhere. Yes! Oh. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. So... 240. Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? 
Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh man, okay. Review Clive's board. Try to establish the whistling man's next target. Rebecca Allen. Ah, this is interesting. Gallows Creek Festival closed early this year after tragedy struck only hours after opening. The Big Wheel broke free from its supports and rolled through town. An investigation is underway. More on page 12. This was 1972. Call for donations to help. Former Gallows High School captain Chuck Brody suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of the, oh, festival disaster last year. Chuck Brody. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying some lottery tickets. Hopefully, he gets lucky and can get back on his feet. Pun not intended. Gallows Creek Power Station hires 20 new staff in record hire, 12 of which were students. Oh, from Gallows Creek High. I'm thinking this janitor maybe was getting bullied or something like that. So it seems like he tried to injure Chuck Brody at this festival. Probably tried to kill him and it didn't end up working. I'm going with Chuck. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay, name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? I think he'll be at the hospital. The hospital. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Forrest, I'm through to the hospital, but they say there isn't anyone mm. by that name there. What? Then who? <laughs> Jeez! It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now? Oh my god. The call board. It. I. One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me. I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. <sighs> oh gosh. Peggy, what's happening in there? Peggy. Peggy. I'm back. He blew up the gas station forest. Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. The fire department is useless now, as you know. And, uh, the hospital's only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you, you've got to say something on the radio. You have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Gallows Creek. I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, the gas station's been bombed. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay inside, and... Oh, just bring us into some music, Forrest. Let's blow this up. Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. <laughs> There's got to be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Right. Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. It's pointing... Ah, these are telling us something. So what are you pointing to? This picture? Hmm. The key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. What key? What key? I don't see a key. What key? Oh, this key. Basement storage. Peggy! 
yes. some warning before yelling down the intercom? Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay, I see a map. Here's a tape. Maggie, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. George Bell. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Clive. He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. It's telling me here. Is it the radio? What is it telling me? Is it telling me to put something right there? Oh. They're all over the place. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. Uh huh. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Okay, five hours. Oh, he's sending us to all the radios. God, this is creepy. Delivery note. Starling Security, September 2nd, 1987. C. Atkins is the supervisor. Delivery is by Van St. Gabriel's Hospital. Delivered, delivered, and installed. Okay, so this is the security. Unable to install. Require new parts. New installation date, September 17th. Woodside Apartments. KFAM radio station. Client opted for manual installation. Employee Jamie Matcher. A manual security system. Access codes. Maintenance code call. Alarm test. Alarm test deactivation code and entry code. Let's take this with us. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running with Stop. Mm, being chased. But by who? Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate stress before death. Before death. I'm still thinking this person was being chased. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. What the... The hell is this? If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. Clive? What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer to the anniversary. None of us are innocent. But I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now that I can save some folk from the worst. Oh. I can. I don't know. Do something to make up for what I did back then, I guess. I didn't 
kill anyone, mind you. But that's past mattering. Now, there's more I could say than I should say, but my employer made it clear that my family would pay a high price if I ever spoke out. So, employer. Same employer we have. So Clive was just trying to find the murderer too. That's what that room is about. Ah. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased. See? Resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head. He was being chased. Was knocked out and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Yep. He's out for revenge. These teenagers were chasing him. Probably bullying him. And he ended up falling. Appeared to have died. But didn't actually die. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but... I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. Sounds like he was running for his life. Mm-hmm. Spreading through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? Mm. How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit. Where the coroner thinks he was moved post death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in a conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. Mm -hmm. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. Nope. He was tracking them down to save them. Come on. Uh, why didn't he just come out with all of them? Your boy be knowing. Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking he killed all those people. Do you 
think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, yep. Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Uncover Clive's research from beyond the grave. Thank God you're back, Forrest. It's three o'clock. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? It's our job. Beats me. Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. All right. I'll get her on the line. When you're ready, shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Fremman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? No, it's Forrest. Sure. Plunker, it's Goose. Goose! <laughs> goose, 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 goose! Where are you? Get your ass here. The party has moved. Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool, though. She said we could raid her a liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Stayed and protected her. Of course, her. we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp. In case that whistling turd turns back up. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, could you put me on with the old lady? You know, should check if it's cool for me to drop by. Oh, there's that goose respect we love. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh, hello? Is this goose? <clears throat> hey, uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh. Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Don't be sorry, I'd be jumpy too. We need to talk. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. Try to smooth I'm it so in. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought <sighs> Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Any guesses? Clive? Any guesses? Well, can you think of any reason why you'd have been targeted? No, I don't think so. All right. When you were attacked earlier, you mentioned a name. Clive. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station and we know you spoke to him in the past Forrest please you don't know what you're doing he'll come for me Virginia it's okay Clive won't be coming after you we think Clive's dead dead but isn't he he's the whistling man Forrest we have evidence why so certain we thought so too why so certain why are you so certain Clive's the whistling man because he all those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you stay quiet? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a, a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And mm. he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but... Well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. 
You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. And that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of oh, my wow. life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. It's okay. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Hmm. Wow. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Why were you targeted? Be serious? That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. <laughs> you got my number. Hmm. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell. He was just a knight-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He to chase after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Are you keeping secrets? Don't play games. Damn it, Sandra. Don't play games. I don't know anything. I... I... Oh, look at the time. Jury's late. I have to go. I'll drive home now or just... Drive. I'm sorry. Well? I might have gone a bit hard on her. A bit? All right, all right. Let's just move on. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Sure, why not? Now? Really? You want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course now. It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never likes his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes, tell him he can get the oh, best gosh, Ponty. Ponty packages here. Ponty. Uh. Uh, you son of a bitch! Stop calling us. God damn it! <laughs> Freaking Ponty. My fault. I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. Uh, 
Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Are you crying? I mean, like... Ponty. Ponty Spencer oh. always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest. Sorry, sorry. That was, that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's. All I'm going to say about that, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Ah, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Please, who's next? Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Yeah, I got the code. Didn't I bring it up here? Use the key, ask a neighbor, go elsewhere, ask a neighbor. Can a neighbor let you in? Uh, I only moved in last I thought week. I brought it up here. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Shit. Noisy part of town, not a dog person. A neighbor's dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he muscled that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. I can't get any. He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system, or I'm gonna die. Security system's name. What's the name of the security system? Yep. Six-digit number. We'll try. We'll see what we can do. Thank you. Forrest. Six digits. All right, let's do this. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. While I try to break dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KCAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. 
All right, let's go get it. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Let's do the deactivation code first. The code is 811220. Thank you, Forrest. Entry code first. Uh huh. I think you gave me the wrong number on purpose. Well, I'll just use the hard way. Forrest, what did we do? My bad, I was trying to. No! <gasps> Roller Ricky. Oh, damn, did he shoot her? She got away. Ricky! Ricky! Hello! Hello? Forrest? Is that you? Did you have something to do with this? Ricky, whoever that was, she was trying to get into the building. I tried to help. Oh. Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. She's the whistling man? She was trying to get inside. That's why she said we'll do this the hard way. Come on, Max. Wait. Stay strong. Okay. Gallows Creek. Roller Ricky survived the whistling man. Process what? Let's go. Just happened. Wow. It's her. That's why she was acting like that and trying to get in there. If we would have gave her the entry code, she would have killed him. But I gave her the alarm test deactivation code. Yeah. Okay. Dead air is a crime, Forrest. All right. So. The whistling man yes. is a woman? I know, I can't believe it. I had my suspicions. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just <laughs> never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Mm-hmm. Tried to get me outside with that. Well, she did get me outside with the music record. Yeah, she seemed pretty normal. I knew she wasn't right. I thought she was just regular. Gallows Creek Strange. She seemed pretty normal. Yeah. She seemed pretty normal. Why do you think she requested that song? It's a good question. Maybe she actually wanted it. I mean, maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her favorite kid yeah. song. Ugh, that's awful. So, what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors, look out for each other and stay safe. I'm sad to say this, but it's time to trust no one. Sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. Don't trust anyone called Don. This, this could, could be a, a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. What happened? Breathe. Is he still breathing? Breathe. Easy, easy. Take a breath. Relax. Okay. Okay. We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me. 
they told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. They had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. What is your friend's name? Where is he hurt? Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason, Jason Parker. Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is, well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen... You're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? We don't have much choice. We can handle it. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Mm -hmm. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. Okay. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Are you sure you can't stay? I can't keep up. Keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. All right, uh, don't replace bandages, elevate his legs, keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding, find someone to get him stabilized, and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? How are you holding up? How is Jason? We're on our own. How are you holding up? Hi, Casey. I'm here. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? Take the knife out. Don't touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. 
The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. We need to secure the knife. Leave the knife alone. Let's secure it. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Use the laundry, use the cleaning rags, use your jacket. Let's use the cleaning Take rags. Take the cleaning rags and hold them over the wound. I really hope these are clean. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. Okay. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? Now? Now isn't the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right, give me a second. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. What's up, Peg? What? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay, I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. She'll have to drive him. Any suggestions? Could somebody nearby help? Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Reggie's right. office. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. Sigh. <sighs> It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note-taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. I'll always Thanks, slide and stuff. I just have to look around. Okay, so we're gonna head to Reggie's office and try to work out the safe combination. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Unlock all doors in the station. Master of unlocking. Is it here? Looks like I need a four-digit code. Hint. Very important date. What is this? Oh, shoot. That gotta be something, right? Remember Reggie Jr.'s birthday. 
10, not 10, 9. Last year was a disaster. So 0910. Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my notes. Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Acts forever. Need to write pitch document. Okay. So 0910. That's not working. Must be something else. This certificate is to certify that Reginald Scott, first aid to the injured. Okay, 1987. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries. Floppy disk. We'll have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. Deep cut. Deep. Look around. Deep cut. Probably right. Deep cuts. I'll let you know when I find something. Or don't. Could this be it? Okay, this is like, I don't know. It's like he's writing like a movie scene or something. Nice. There we go. Eleven zero seven. That's what uh, the computer said that this date takes place on right there. Peggy Weaver. Hey Peggy, I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. What? Why are you reading my file? You need to find someone who can help Casey. We already know I can. Don't waste time. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. Wait, I want to read her. I can read the rest of this later. She lives on Wayland Road. That's her phone number. Notes. I've never seen somebody jail with everybody as quickly as Peggy has. Her, Karen, and Barbara have really become a little family already. Maybe we need to run this situation on girl power. Hopefully it's cheaper than electric. Sometimes I wonder if Peggy secretly wants her own show. She hasn't been shy about getting involved in the calls on the screen. Sometimes it feels as though Forrest could just leave for a coffee mid-call and nobody would know. Peggy and Karen have missed another work event, this time first aid training, because of their training sessions. Their collection of cocktail parasails grow after each session. Why are they doing training sessions at a bar? Huh. Bradley Carter. Oh, shit. The fuck was that? Huh, he's a food critic. When I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? To them, I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown or Henderson. Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I didn't realize she was so infested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after work meetings sometimes. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of their first aid training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth to mouth and Barbara got really upset. Karen has really stepped up her duties in recent months. She has fully taken on Hamish's show. Okay, Karen started mentoring Peggy. I think this will be really good for Peggy. They are even doing team building training getaways. I'm starting to suspect that these producer training getaways are being strategically timed. Okay, so she ain't gonna be able to help. Let's see Barbara. She lives on Craven Street, West Craven, Craven Street. Barbara is really getting on well with all the staff here. All right, I'm just kind of skimming through. She's not gonna be able to do anything either. That's the receptionist. So it's gotta be this last person, John, newsreader. John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was a station. Okay, war medic. Apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in his home. All right, we're going with John. Hey Peggy, you there? I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? He's going into shock. Peggy, what did the nurse say? Did he have booze earlier? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just... Stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's legs. Casey, I need so the to blood can flow down. Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. I'm looking at my 
your notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah! Replace the bandages, apply an additional. Apply Take an additional. Bandage. Apply another one on top of it. Do you still have something you can use? I've used the rest of the laundry to keep him warm, so... I'll use my jacket. I can always get a new one. I'll fix his bandage and get him warm. Hold on, please. He's going to be fine. Be strong for Jason. It's not looking good. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay. Okay? Okay. Please. I can't give him what he needs. Please sit down. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest. We need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, zero, seven, three, five. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. This is a medical emergency. Somebody has been stabbed. The whistling man is back. I'm going to say the whistling man John, is back. No, uh, the whistling man is back in town, or at least it's not important right now. A man has been stabbed and we need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Yeah. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. How's he now? Are you hurt? When he was thrashing around, did he hurt you in any way? Or, or are you okay? Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. This is John Hedges. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. He got there that fast? I'm guessing that's Jason there. Oh, okay. Casey, I'm going to need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. God, I hope he's going to be all right. <sighs> and with that, the show moves on. We saved him. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. 
Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, man. Hey, it's Roll Ricky. Good to hear from you again. Uh, how you holding up after everything? Is Maxie okay? Maxie is a little fighter, man. I just know he's gonna pull through. I think our roller show might be canceled tomorrow, though. Uh, I'm sorry again about how that went. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Really? Info from the attack? I'm waiting. Oh? What's that? See, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Yo. Tell me about him. Keep talking. What? What? You knew George? Yeah, but not long. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love. Tell me about her. What was her name? Dawn? Tell me about her. Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? Just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up, mm. and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees, and, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And it wasn't your fault. That's horrible. Maybe if you hadn't run. Wonder what would have happened if you didn't run. Forrest. No, I know what you mean. I wondered that for a long time. Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Night, Ricky. Wow. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, She's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Hmm. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy, what's up? Peggy? You're going to want to take this call off the air. Off air? Just do it. All right, folks. It's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll take it right back. Take the call off air? Bruh. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Oh. Surprise! It's Leslie, our Yo. 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sara and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sara? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. Uh, anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We 
you've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. It's been a long night, so help is on its way. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he... how she... how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Haven't we helped enough? What do you need? Gallows Creek is too big. Gallows Creek is too big? Come on, Leslie, can't you just, I don't know, secure the town? It's not that easy to secure a whole town. No matter how small, Forrest. Now listen. It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, We'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I don't know. I'll do my best. I don't know. I don't know. Is she really just going to give up her location? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Let's get back on the air. I hope you're right. I don't think it's going to be that easy. It's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena, champ. Time to turn the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller... I just want to say, things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you haven't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Yeah, Jason Parker survived the Whistling Man. Let's go. You feeling okay? It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Yep. Why do you ask about that? I'm glad you asked, actually. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry. But there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. 
Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on. Wow. Like he'd never existed. He was his best friend. What happened? Who killed George? Did you kill him? Jason, I don't know how to ask, but did you kill George? No, of course not. But that prank did, mm. so I I may as well have. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Mm-hmm. Decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man. Pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? Oh! What happened? Oh! Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Oh, uh-uh. The -uh. is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago. In case you ever want <sighs> to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Oh, gosh. <sighs> far back corner. Why is this station so big? Huge. Far back corner. That must be it. Boom! We've got power. Restore power to the station after the blackout. Uh oh, god damn, the freaking the whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Oh shit. Where is he? Oh, or she. Hearing footsteps. Okay. Oh, the hell was that? What the? What was that? Head back upstairs to warn Peggy. What was that? Did something fall? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Go, 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 go. He was in that little window. Go. Peggy. Oh, no. Peggy, where did you go? Oh! What the hell? No way. This can't be happening. Bruh, what? So now you want to be on the radio or something? I mean, what? A, a call. Um. Where's Peggy? What do you want? What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. 
know I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Ha! You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? I'd rather not. All right. All right. Let's. I'm happy to hear that. Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch. Teddy? Let me go. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're right. with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And that's and Peggy. That's where that is. Well, he knows he'll get it. But you're here. Then who's here? Wait, then. I knew it. Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry, Henry Barrow. Your son? This is a lot. Hi, Henry. I thought this was Peggy. Okay. So it's not Peggy. Hopefully not. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. Don't mind him. He's just shy. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? Is that... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie... Marie Campbell. Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Yep. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Not Don, huh? Quiet, Teddy. Where's this going? Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's going to know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ooh. You're gonna talk when I talk to you, and not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you a chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it. Why should I? I won't do it. I won't do it, Marie. I won't be part of this. You sure that's what you wanna do, Forrest? Last chance. All right, I'll do it. I won't do it, Marie. I'm standing ground. I won't do it, Marie. Have it your way. Henry, honey, he's all yours. Oh, shit. Uh-uh! Uh-uh! No! Come any closer. No! Oh! Don't worry. Marie, no! I was... You know you asked about her before I sent her... Oh, shit. Away. Oh, shit. Oh! Henry! Henry? Okay, maybe we should have, yeah, reached the end of Whistling Night. I could have survived. <laughs> Look at Forrest crossed out. I mean, I wasn't trying to play her game. If you wanted everybody to know what happened, you tell him. Hell, Henry could have told him. He's at the station with me. I'll do it. Okay, Marie, I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Damn. I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. I can do that if you say so. Interview you. Uh, all right. I'm just going to agree at this point. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And 
hell. You might be the only one to leave here alive. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Be honest, Teddy. Hit him, Marie. Hit him. Hit him again, Marie. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. Whistling night, right? The night Mooney vanished. Tell me why that night. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So I helped him keep himself together. You. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About Midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Ricky didn't know. Did you ask Ricky? And so he deserves to die? Did you ask Ricky? Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him... He would have given everything away. But he... well... Doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? Go to hell. Hit him, Marie. Hit him again, Marie. God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. He and George took off running, but Somehow, we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing. Tell me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. Who was it? What happened next? How did you feel? How did you feel in that moment? I felt like... Who 
Who was under the mask? What happened next? Tell me what happened next. I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Mm-hmm. Who's the whistling man? Football player. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy? George fell off Whistling Point. Where were you? How do you know? Why'd he fall? Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... He kept... Backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar. It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. I believe her. Then why the cover up? Even if you didn't push him. Even if you didn't push him, you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed for someone not getting a choke. Ugh. I think Marie would disagree. But if you really felt that way, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us. Are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, of course. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why? George was a blip? blip. Wow, he wasn't a blip. That's evil. He wasn't a blip, Marie. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night. But you never found his body, Marie? I looked all night. Jogger found him the next morning, washed up on the river. Instead of telling the truth, she lied. She said she found him in the reservoir. Our jazz runner, Sandra Sharp. Mm. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he'd just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. You've been through hell. This has to stop. When will the killing end? You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got trying to cope with her started shouldn't have pushed my George on the cliff he should have been punished he's coming to a stop at least for now here where George and I first met before he joined the football team was right after he shot the winning throw wait a sec the school gym the football field the roller rink what are you doing where is Marie holding Teddy hostage? The school gym? Gallows Creek High. In the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about... Teddy Gallows Jr. survived. Teddy. So... Marie? Where? Oh Peggy. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. 
to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god, I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own Her sister? Sister? sister what the hell? Someone explain. Will someone please explain to me what's happening? speaking to Jason I got a call do you remember well, yeah it was from Dawn she said that my sister Marie was there that night George died and that I should come to the gym for a reunion and when you walked in you found out that my sister is the whistling man Good to see you too, Peggy. Wow. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. You should have said... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's Mom and Dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Next best thing? You mean Peggy? Don't. 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 Marie, listen to me. You don't have to do this. Someone has to pay for what they did. Marie, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, what a twist. You forgot me. Just like the rest of you. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Uh, I don't know. It's got to be something in here, right? Oh, happy birthday. Wait. Happy birthday, sis. Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I. Well, I. Henderson police! Freeze! Oh! No! Shit! Henry, get out of there! Ah! Peggy! We have two wounded and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Henderson police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. Peggy Weaver survived after Peggy. the whistling man. Help. Now, we got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This has been Forrest Nash. How should I sign off this show? Good night and good morning. Let's make tomorrow better. It's been a scream. And it's been a scream. Forrest Nash survived the Whistling Man. Okay, so we got both endings. <laughs> the ending where we died for not listening and the ending where we survived for getting down to the truth. Wow, that was her sister. Her sister thought that she forgot about her, meaning that the other killer that was in the room was they're all family.
One is in custody, one is in the woods. Okay, that was freaking awesome. That was such a different horror game experience. It wasn't like jump scare here, jump scare there. This was like a really well-developed true horror story. I really appreciated playing this and I wanted to play it fully through. Hopefully y'all stayed with me. If y'all did, let me know in the comment below because I'm gonna be playing long games like this. So I need y'all to stay with me, all right? Let me know y'all thoughts on this crazy game. I'll see y'all in the comments. Be sure to smash that thumbs up button. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart and I will see you in the next video.